Well, the pre extraction records for the vertical dimension, it includes uh, all except the answer is the answer is tooth size and shape. So, uh, so these records they are important to determine the appropriate vertical dimension of the occlusion before the dental extraction. So, what are the elements that are included in the pre extraction records? The first one is the profile radiograph. So profile radiograph of the face that may be used to determine the vertical dimension. So pre, uh, the profile radiograph of the face they may be used to determine the vertical dimension position. Second is the profile photograph. So a side view photograph of the patient face helps in assessing facial aesthetics and profile. The third is the articulated cast and the model. So a dentulous patient cast they are mounted on the articulator using a phase 4 record. Occlusal records with the jaws in the centric a relation are used to mount the mandibular cast. So after the tooth extraction, edentulous cast they are mounted on the articulator and inter arch comparison they are made. So the facial measurement, uh, the distance between the nose and under surface of skin, it is measured using calipers. So various measurement they are taken between the uh, uh, like you can use is the closer speaking space and physiological measurement. To, uh, to establish the proper particular dimension. Apart from that, we can use is profile sill house. So what are profile sill house? So uh, accurate reproduction of profile, they can be cut down in a cardboard or contoured in wire from patient photograph. So this sill out would serve as a template and, uh, and that would help you to measure the vertical dimension. So these are the method that we use to measure the pre extraction records. The tooth size and shape they are important consideration in overall treatment planning but they not be specifically categorized as part of pre extraction record for establishing the vertical dimension. So answer is D. Coming to the next question, for gingival displacement, uh, what would be the pH of codes? So we know that gingival retraction codes, they are used for displacing, uh, displacing the gingival tissue away from the tooth structure, uh, creating space for impression material. So the solution or agents that are impregnated in the gingival retraction code, they are often acidic. So these acidic solution, they help in achieving the hemostasis. That is they help to, they help, they would help you to arrest the bleeding and hence they would provide astringent effect. So example is the ferric sulfate. So ferric sulfate it is one of the substances that is used in gingival retraction code. It is acidic and it has a pH below 7. So it would help it would effectively help in coagulating the blood quickly and promote the hemostasis during the impression procedure. So the acidic nature helps in achieving the astringency and hemostasis without causing significant tissue irritation. So that is why your answer would be A. A 25 year old patient complains of pain in upper right tooth that is mobile and slightly raved from socket. 
so identify the condition so it is acute apical abscess we know acute apical abscess it is the localized uh, localized collection of pus at the root apex of the tooth that is usually caused by the bacterial infection so here the there would be tooth mobility the patient would uh, experience severe pain apart from that the tooth may be felt you may feel uh, the patient may feel that the tooth is slightly raised or elevated in the socket so that occurs due to the accumulation of uh, of the pus and the inflammation so the abscess indicates a significant infection in the pulp that has spread to the surrounding tissues so that is why there would be inflammation uh, the inflammation remember it can cause a pressure so that lead to pain swelling and elevation of the tooth within the socket so the inflammatory changes and destruct uh, and the destruction of the periodontal ligament leads to abscess that can result that can result to increase the tooth mobility the swelling on the surrounding tissue due to abscess can exert pressure on the tooth that that cause it to be slightly raised or elevated from the socket so answer is c identify the gingival swelling as shown in the image it's the gingival cyst of new bone so the gingival cyst of new bone remember it is common benign cystic lesion that can appear in the mouth of the neonates so you will see multiple nodules along the alveolar ridge of the mandible coming to the next question a 25 year old patient is admitted in the admit, uh, in the medical ward and he has a rigidity and a seizure gait so what is the most common likely condition so the symptoms of rigidity and seizure gait in 25 year uh, old patient they are due to the due to the spastic cerebral palsy now the what do you mean by the term seizer gait uh, let us understand that so the seizer gait means that is describe a walking pattern in which one leg in which one leg it crosses in in which one leg crosses in the front of other during a walking cycle so it resembles like a closing the movement of pair of scissors so this condition remember it is often associated with spastic cerebral palsy so this gait uh, this gait pattern is uh, it is seen involving the spastic uh, involving the spastic cerebral palsy now what is spastic cerebral palsy let us understand that spastic uh paraplegia it's a neurological condition that is uh, you will see stiffness so there would be stiffness and weakness in the muscle of the lower limb so the increase muscle tone that is sparsity in the leg muscle can lead to this uh, seizure gait pattern so as a person walks uh, the there would be tightness in his leg muscles that causes the leg uh, leg to cross or seizure so so there are two conditions where the seizure gait they are generally observed one is the spastic uh paraplegia and other is the cerebral palsy so cerebral palsy it is a group of neurological disorders uh that affect the movement postures and coordination so there would be the damage to the developing brain during pregnancy or the child birth so sparsity it is a common feature with the cerebral palsy so what is the mechanism of this uh, is this seizure gait so uh, remember the seizure gait in this condition is primarily due to the sparsity and the imbalance in the muscle due to the uh, imbalance in the muscle tone across the 
uh, across the hip adductors and other leg muscles. So the excessive muscle tone can cause legs to come together leading to crossing pattern during the walking. So other option is chorea. What do you mean that? Chorea, uh, it is a movement disorder that is characterized. There would be involuntary, rapid, zerky and unpredictable movements of the limb or face. So the movement uh, may appear random and purposeless and uh, they gives like a dance quality or a chorea it is associated with the conditions like Huntington chorea or it can occur scantily to the other neurological uh, disorders. Parkinsonism it, it refers to the group of neurological disorder. In Parkinsonism you will see tremors, slowing of the movements, rigidity so that are the feature of the Parkinsonism. So answer is a D, spastic cerebral palsy. A 10 year old patient, he comes to clinic with bilateral expansion of the mandible. The lesion starts at the age of 4 and he has progressed un uh, until now. Identify the condition. So the condition here is cherubism. So cherubism, remember it is a hereditary condition uh, transmitted as autosomal dominant trait. So here you will see bilateral expansion of jaw, particularly the both side of mandible. So the condition here described as 10 year old child presenting with bilateral expansion of mandible that started at age of 4. So that is a consistent characteristic of the cherubism. So the, uh, this condition it is generally seen within the first few years of life, progresses until puberty and then it begins to resolve by the middle age. So remember the cherubism, it appears in early childhood often around the age of 2 or 4 that is mentioned here. Apart from that uh, you should know what is the gene associated, it is caused by mutation in CH3PB2 gene. So remember that that is very important. Uh, the enlargement it is due to the replacement of the normal bone with the fibrous tissue. So answer is cherubism. Coming to the next question, the blade that are used for uh, gingivectomy are remember they are the Orban's knife and Crickland knife. So this one remember this these are uh, this figure represents the this one is the Crickland knife, Crickland knife and other is the Orban's knife. Moving to the next question identify the muscle that is involved the answer is a smooth muscle. Smooth muscle that is also known as myocytes have narrow spindle shaped appearance. The cells are in, uh, elongated with the taper ends. So each cell contains a single centrally placed nucleus. So these are the feature of the smooth muscle. Again identify the histological feature of the muscle. These are the smooth muscle as shown in the figure. A 50 year old female patient, he presented with a complaint of pain in the uh, upper left back region with a halitosis and nasal obstruction for week. The patient has undergone extraction of the root pieces uh, with the same one month back under local anesthesia. Identify the condition. It's oral antral fistula. We know oral antral fistula, it is abnormal communication between the oral cavity and the maxillary sinus. So th this complication is generally seen during the extraction of the upper molars especially seen during the extraction. So, so when there is connection between the oral cavity and the maxillary sinus, oral antral fistula can occur. So that could lead to halitosis and nasal obstruction for week. The plural fluid light criteria correct? Criteria is the 
so remember this criteria these are the modified light criteria for uh, so the pleural fluid it is, con uh, is considered exudate if one of the following criteria they are met so these are the criteria given so if the albumin gradient is greater than 12 then it is considered as a transudate coming to the next question the allopurinol and xanthine oxidase typically uh, shows what kind of inhibition it's the suicidal inhibition well allopurinol we know it's used in the treatment of the gout so it act as a inhibitor for the xanthine oxidase so xanthine oxidase it is an enzyme that is involved in purine metabolism converting hypoxanthine to xanthine and xanthine to the uric acid so the elevated level of the uric acid can lead to conditions like uh, like there could be got uh, there would be excessive deposition of the uh, urate crystals in the joint so the allopurinol it is classified as suicidal or uh, inhibition of the xanthine oxidase so identify the above appliance well it's the pendulum appliance so we know pendulum appliance it is an orthodontic appliance that was that is used for distalizing of the maxillary molar and it was introduced by j j hilgers so the pendulum appliance it consists of bands on the first premolar and soldered palatal extension that is made up of 0 0.036 stainless steel wire the palatal extension it is embedded in the acrylic button located in the rug area and it is contoured to fit the anterior plate so bands they are fitted on the maxillary first molar and they are equipped with weldable lingual tubes an active palatal spring it is created by using 0 0.032 titanium molybdenum wire so this palatal spring it is responsible for generating the force that is necessary required for the distalization of the molars so activation of palatal springs it results in forces that apply to the maxillary molar so right and left pendulum springs it consists of a recurved molar intrusion wire a small horizontal adjustment loop and closed helix and a loop for retention in the acrylic button so the pendulum appliance it is typically used in orthodontic appliances for distalization of the maxillary molar whenever it is required what is the most important factor in considering while performing the surgery of OKC well OKC is a shift that arises from the cell rift of the dental lamina so it can occur in any part but it is more commonly seen in the posterior part of the mandible so the the most important factor that should be considered while performing surgery on OKC is it has a high reoccurrence rate so OKC have tendency to reoccur after initial surgical treatment so this high reoccurrence rate uh tell you the importance of the okc during the surgical re removal so remember okc it is known for its aggressive behavior that includes rapid growth and there can be invasion into the adjacent structures coming to the next question the canal orifice they are equidistant from line drawn is mesial distal direction through the center of pulp chamber floor except so according to the law of symmetry 
with the exception of the maxillary first molar the orifice of canal they are equidistant on either side of line drawn mesial to the distal through the floor of the pulp chamber so this law indicates that the most teeth the canal orifice they are symmetrical positioned around the center line through the pulp chamber floor so other laws are laws of centrality concentricity so there are first law of symmetry second law of symmetry law of color change remember them for your exam point of view the soap bubble appearance it is seen in it is seen in a giant cell tumor so the soap bubble tumor uh, of the adult so in giant cell tumor you will see a soap bubble trabeculation the change in the hue per fraction as the light intensity changes it's the benzold bruke effect so due to uh, the phenomenon of change in hue perception with the light intensity change it is known as benzold bruke effect which form of topical fluoride it has highest fluoride release it's the stannous fluoride so remember the stannous fluoride release 32% of fluoride apf releases 30% and sodium fluoride it releases 28% so remember that all are the component of root except the answer would be would be enamel all are true for the secondary active transport except well the secondary active transport it is also known as co transport as it is a cellular process that utilizes the energy stored in the ion concentrated Filtration gradients across the cell membrane. Unlike the primary active transport, which uses ATP for energy, the secondary active transport, scand uh, energy, the secondary active transport, it drives energy secondarily from the electric electrochemical gradients that is established by the primary active transport. So the option, the secondary active transport does not require energy. However, this energy is not directly obtained from atp but it is derived from the pre existing ion concentration gradient the secondary active transport involves the exchange of another substance in exchange of transported molecules so this process it is dependent upon the electrochemical gradient the secondary active transport it is referred as co transport so it utilizes the energy generated by the active transport of the ions to move molecules against their concentration gradient fourth option is incorrect in secondary active transport two substances are transported but it is not accurate to say that one is transported along with the first instead the transport it is driven by the by the energy derived from the pre existing electrochemical gradient the radiographic view for the zygomatic fractures all of them are true except the answer is reverse town uh, view it is not typically used for assessing zygomatic fracture instead it is used for examining the fracture of the condylar neck providing a specific view for the posterior anterior wall of the maxillary sinus so that is why the answer is reverse town the mandibular molar diagram occlusion we view identify the tooth it's the right mandibular first molar identify the above instrument it's it it is a lumbar puncture that is used for bacterial meningitis identify the nerve block technique it's the go gates technique so go gate technique it is method for mandibular anesthesia so the target area for the go gates is the lateral side of condylar neck just below the insertion of lateral pterygoid muscle so this is the target area for the go gates block